you could um, get a website known, but uh, search engines soon changed that equation. And right now, actually, um, it's likely that your website is going to get visited by web uh, search engine crawlers uh, before it gets seen by a lot of people. And so um, those are definitely, you know, uh, the you know two very powerful organic ways that um, your website gets seen by other people. But uh, another group that you shouldn't neglect are these influencers and aggregators. And um, the influencers can be people like you know, uh, or or sites like TechCrunch um, that basically you know try and get a lot of news out about what's new on the web. And the aggregators, um, you know, uh, places like Dig and um, Reddit that pull together lots of information from around the web. And uh, by using all of these different pieces of uh, uh, traffic drivers properly, you can actually create um, a cycle, a beneficial cycle that brings more and more users to your site. Um, and uh, so I thought I'd mention a couple of, of the really interesting ways that you can understand um, traffic and, and how your website is amenable to getting traffic. Uh, one is uh, the well-known uh, page rank measure um, is that it, it estimates the traffic that's driven by links. So it's, it's really trying to come up with the best guess of how much traffic your your web page could potentially get uh, by people just vi visiting and clicking on links. Um, so it, it doesn't try to estimate the popularity of a site based on things like word of mouth or uh, what influencers say, but purely on on the amount of links that you have. Um, and um, it it does actually include all sorts of semantic notions in it as well. So it, it tries to guess whether um, you know, a link is more likely to be clicked on than another link. So if, you're linked, uh, if your page is linked to from the very bottom of a long page, it's much less likely to be linked, it's much less likely to get clicked than if it's linked to at the, the top of a page. Um, if, it's a, if it's a big link, you know, it's more likely to get clicked than a small link, etc. If the text in the link is very interesting, it, it is more likely to get clicked on than another. So um, there's a number of these kind of factors that are uh, placed into the weighting of page rank that's going to indicate um, how likely it is someone's going to click through to your, uh, to your page. Um, in the other direction, I think uh, if you're a content creator and you're interested in seeing um, how people, um, you know, are viewing your content uh, in the blogosphere. There's the, the the trackback functionality that allows you to sort of uh, get a sense of who's blogging about, say, a blog post. And in the um, in the Twitter environment, there's a, an API that basically lets you see who's who's retweeting um, the things that you're tweeting. So. Uh, if you want to sort of look at the downstream influence that your in, your information has on others, there's APIs out there that kind of let you uh, get some visibility into that. And um, by understanding both the incoming and the outgoing uh, uh, influences of your website, uh, you basically are in charge of uh, building the traffic to your site. And it's something that's uh, amenable to engineering as opposed uh, to sort of random chance or uh, random marketing dollar spends. Um, uh, one, of, one of the things that's, that's interesting about the web is that it's still very much um, a young place. And it's still in, uh, in a, a state of like constant growth. And a lot of websites actually are capitalizing on that growth by understanding, you know, where where are the things that people are paying attention to now, and how can we make our site uh, capitalize on those features that are really popular now or the functions that people are looking at now. So if you're interested in in sort of 
um, you know, channeling your energy in the areas where the web is growing very fast. You can look at areas like mashups um, and mobile space and, and also um, in the understanding that more and more of uh, your desktop is becoming uh, a web app. So um, in, in all of these three areas, uh, there's a higher than average amount of growth uh, compared to the, the rest of the web. So if you're building just an e-commerce site, you're not growing as fast as if you're building a widget site. Um, if you're just you know blogging, you, you're not um, growing as fast as something that's a site that's focused on the mobile space uh, and real-time information. So um, it's it's really interesting to look right now at you know the things that are that are growing fast and and basically to get a sense of the fact that um, as new platforms emerge uh, there's going to be new areas where the web grows quickly um, so looking at looking at growth itself the the growth that you want to accomplish um, there's sort of you know, one of the first things you need to accomplish on a website is get people to come to it for some reason or another. And um, um, one of the things that, you know, we discovered at, at iMeme was that um, it was very hard to describe what our site, what our service did for a long time. And at one point, um, we had a, a feature that became really popular, and it was the playlist feature. And when people started talking about iMeme, and we could see people blogging or about it as, you know, oh, the place where you can uh, do playlists, um, that was actually, that coincided with the time that it really started taking off. So um, I've titled this slide Tagline Overload. But um, in fact, when, when people can describe what you're doing in a, in a single sentence, um, and no one else is doing it as well as you are, then you're in a pretty good place. So, uh, and it, this has gotten even more interesting and more important um, in, the age of, in the age of Twitter because, uh, you know, if you have to describe a whole site in 140 40 characters, it's probably better um, if there's a single memorable sentence that describes what you're doing. Um, so, yeah, that, that tagline is sort of... Um, perhaps going to be the lure that brings people in. And definitely it's going to be the thing that's going to aid word of mouth uh, uh, interest in what you're building. So um, we spent, uh, I don't know, 18 months to get to the point where people talked about our site like that. <laughs> and during that whole time, you know, we'd, we'd gone to investor meetings, we'd gone to uh, our board meetings and uh, and you know, explained what our site did and, and to, to our investors' satisfaction. But they weren't really our target users. So you know, we were able to get funding. We were able to get um, uh, buy-in from all of the people who worked with us. But it was really when our users you know, told us, this is what we like you for, that we took off. And um, there's a lot more, but, but that's what really helped with the, the word of mouth. Um, so basically, think, think of, uh, of this notion of information spread on the web. Uh, why should anyone care about your site? Um, and if, if there's an, a succinct answer, you know, a really short answer that explains why someone's going to care about your site, it helps it spread so much faster. So. Um, uh, one of these things that you want to do to, you know, grow the the growth rate of your site is is come up with a really good explanation for why people should care about what you're doing. Um, and uh, if you're appealing to something that peop that consumers want, it's all the more powerful. So. Um, that, that first step in building uh, growth is, is sort of building that initial attraction, an initial reason for people to show up. And the second thing that you want to do is once they're there, you want to figure out how to keep them. 
uh, you 